Forecasting winter mischief in Texas is never an easy task, and certainly not for the faint of heart. We've got your Tuesday evening update now that we are entering the range of high-resolution model data. Let's take a look in this Tuesday evening update of the Texas Weather Roundup. zippity doo da zippity a, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, hey, hey, it's 10 p.m. Tuesday, the 7th of January, 2025, I'm Texas Storm Chaser Spaldy and Chief David Reimer. If you haven't seen me yet today, well, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and for someone, I'm sure it's a happy birthday, so there you go. Clearly, the head is reflective this evening, but it's also soft and fluffy, so there's a bonus. Does anyone care? No. Am I tired? Yes. Let's get into the forecast. Now, we are in the range now of the HER, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh model for part of the event. This now goes out to 6 p.m. Central Time Thursday, so we're now in the range where we can see the onset of this event using very high resolution weather model data. As you can see, it just makes one heck of a mess. Uh, we've got snow falling by Wednesday afternoon in the borderland. The Trans-Pecos, far west Texas. As we go into Thursday morning, we see scattered convective elements that could be uh, pockets of snow sleet across parts of the Permian Basin, technically this evening or Wednesday evening, uh, then spreading east into the big country, northwest Texas, the Concho Valley, even parts of central Texas, mostly Waco North, North Texas, Texoma, northeast Texas, as we get into the day Thursday. You can see we also have a lot of rain that develops across the southeastern half of the state. The key word here being rain. It is going to be above freezing there, and there will be no issues with icing where temperatures at the surface are above freezing. But... As we go into Thursday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, parts of the Concho Valley, the Permian Basin, the big country, even parts of the Northern Hill Country, and maybe, you know, even down to Waco, we may see temperatures near enough to freezing where we may see some freezing rain sleet. If that happens, we could see some light ice accumulations, especially on elevated objects, tree branches, power lines, you know, anything that's not on the ground, uh, bridges, overpasses, and that could cause some issues. The Rain snow line moves north Thursday afternoon near I-20 in North Texas, pretty much honestly all the way from the Permian Basin, big country, North Texas, Northeast Texas. If only the rain snow line would actually end up there, that would be a pretty convenient uh, demarcation line. But make no mistake, even though we're looking at high-res model data, we're still 24 plus hours out. Things are going to change and there will be surprises because that's what happens with winter weather in Texas. That being said, we are growing confident in that the highest threat for accumulations of snow and winter precipitation will be big country, North Texas, Texoma, Northeast Texas, snow-wise. Wednesday night, Thursday morning, we may see some light ice accumulations again. Northern Hill Country, Concho Valley, Big Bend, Permian Basin, even southern North Texas and the East Texas, but the rain snow line will move north late Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, close to I-20 as temperatures rise above freezing. In fact, temperatures may rise a degree or two above freezing even where we see snow in, like, DFW Tyler. But if the temperatures are loft or cold enough, they'll actually still allow a heavy wet snow to reach the surface. It's just, well, at that point, instead of just accumulating naturally, we'd see accumulations if the snow fell more quickly than it could melt. And you also note this model is being more aggressive with the development of additional snow, not thunder snow, snow, I, I guess I can't rule out thunder snow, but snow in the Panhandle West Texas as we get into late Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. There is expected to be around Thursday night into Friday morning that would develop out in the Panhandle West Texas, move across Oklahoma, Northwest Texas, North Texas, Northeast Texas. Uh, so even though you see a bit of a dry slot there towards the end of this model run, we'd likely see additional activity develop overnight Thursday into Friday morning. So what does that mean after 6 p.m.? Well, first off, again, let me emphasize possible snow accumulations this afternoon, this evening, Borderland, El Paso, Big Bend, Trans-Pecos, one to three inches, slicky, slicky, doom, doom travel. And same thing goes Wednesday night. Did I say tonight, today and tonight? Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night. My days are mixed up. So tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. And then into Thursday. Now, here's the North American model that just came in. For what it's worth, it's kind of back to what it was showing this morning. It's less aggressive with the precipitation back northwest. Notice how we go pretty much from the HER model showing stuff developing, Panhandle West Texas, big country. We switch right over the NAM. It, it doesn't have that. 
And again, that's something we're going to have to watch for and see. We have some different mindsets here in model land, but still, even with this model, we would see winter precipitation continue Thursday night into Friday morning. North Texas, generally from DFW North into Oklahoma, Northeast Texas along the north of I-20, maybe closer to I-30 and North. Maybe even, and maybe a little bit of sleep mixing in farther south, but temperatures at the surface should be above freezing. And again, you can see it's going to be raining. Southeastern half of the state. I mean, Thursday afternoon through Friday morning. Some heavy rain at times, too. Could get some beneficial rains, but temperatures will be above freezing at the surface, preventing any sort of ice issues there. So, in terms of what we expect for accumulations, if you watched our video earlier this afternoon. By the way, here's the rain totals. Yeah, it's going to rain. Uh, we have not changed our expectations regarding the snow totals and the ice totals. I think we're in pretty good shape for now. I don't see any reason we need to change these based on the current data. As you can see, we are expecting generally one to three inches of snow Borderland El Paso, Guadalupe Mounds, Trans-Pecos, down into the Davis Mounds, lighter snow down to the Big Bend. Kind of a little snow hole there in the Permian Basin. We could have some sleet snow, maybe some freezing rain. Generally speaking, one to three inches, one to two inches of snow around the big country into West Texas and the Panhandle. Uh, lighter snow, northwestern Panhandle. Southern demarcation of the snow line, a dusting, maybe a half inch of snow. Northern hill country, maybe. Honestly, it looks probably like it'd be more of sleet or freezing rain at this point, so a bit of ice. Uh, Waco north, Tyler north, and then the heaviest snows continue to be indicated. Roughly northern, well, let's just do this, DFW Metroplex north to the Red River. Texoma, along north of I-20, into far northeast Texas, where we could see, you know, two to five inches of snow. If we really overperformed, maybe six inches, but that looks more likely up in southeastern Oklahoma and Arkansas. These totals, as we get more data in overnight, will probably look different when you wake up in the morning and we have the latest information. But for now, this is what looks to be decent, and we have no reason to change it and again. Here's the ice forecast. And again, we may see some light icing back into the northern hill country, the Concho Valley, the Permian Basin, maybe southern north Texas and northeast Texas. We'll see if that gets uh, changed a bit, but at this point, not a big ice storm, and again, temperatures mostly Wednesday night, Thursday morning, below freezing in those regions, climbing above freezing as we get into Thursday afternoon with the freezing line moving north towards Interstate 20, maybe even a little bit north of that. So that is the evening update with the upcoming winter mischief. So our plan here is we will have a new video out around 8 a.m. tomorrow is what we're thinking. We've been pushing it out a little later just so we can get some additional data. And, well, I don't like waking up at 3 a.m. when I'm up at 10 p.m. So uh, we'll be up. We'll post updates as needed. And, yeah, we're probably going to have at least three videos tomorrow because winter weather in Texas. Uh, hopefully one of them doesn't involve me apologizing for a huge busted forecast like we almost had earlier today. But that is a possibility. I mean, make no mistake, it is entirely possible some of these models, like the North America model, are right, and we end up with hardly any accumulations of snow outside of Texoma, the northeast parts of Texas. There's a lot of possibilities here. As I discussed in this afternoon's forecast video, we're dealing with really two storm systems. We've got the main upper-level low over Baja, California. That's a little further southwest than expected, a little slower moving in. So that's allowing additional warm air to be pushed north in from the Gulf of Mexico, kind of warming things up a degree or two. Yeah, that's how little it takes to change some things. But also, we're going to have a smaller piece of upper-level energy coming in from the northern plains of the United States. That's going to fly on down on Thursday. And there's some disagreement now amongst models what that's going to do. Some data that supports snow suggests that the their systems are going to essentially merge and create additional upper-level lift or isotropic lift across parts of Oklahoma, Panhandle, West Texas. And that would be the activity that moves across the Red River regions, North Texas, Northeast Texas, late Thursday night into Friday morning, while other model data suggests that northern piece of energy is, for all intended purposes, just going to smack in the upper level low, not do much, and not provide any additional upper level lift, which would shunt the highest precipitation chances to the southeastern half of the state where temperatures are going to be above freezing. So that's a couple of the scenarios we're going to be watching for tomorrow. It just, again, goes to show, even though a majority of deterministic and ensembles 
weather model wise, you know, we're talking over 100, over 80% of them supported a significant winter storm, you know, a day or two ago, guess what? Doesn't mean Jack Diddley squad until we're there, we're at the event. And Texas has a way of kind of trying to mess up your forecast. So that's where we're at now. I mean, it goes to show you why we didn't start putting out snowfall maps from weather model data yesterday when some of them were showing 12 to 15 inches of snow on the DFW Metroplex. Guess what? That's happened like once in the last 30 years, and I was there for it. February 2010 was a very interesting event. Could that happen this time around somewhere? Yeah. Am I going to say it's going to happen right now? No, because we can't tell you that for sure. And I certainly couldn't pin down to a county or two. So, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue analyzing data overnight. Not only us, National Weather Service meteorologists, everybody and their mamas are going to be looking at data. And you know what? Half of it's looking at the model data, but you live by the models, you die by the models. You just got to put some experience into this. And, well, we've been doing this 16 years now, so we have just a little bit. And that's how we're able to try to maintain some semblance of balance and why we are not, you know, radically changing forecast after each model run. May we have to change the forecast significantly tomorrow? Sure. I mean, we're talking about a winter storm coming into Texas outside of 24 hours. Anything's on the table. So we'll keep an eye on it. And we'll be back tomorrow morning with your Wednesday morning edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. You can get your local weather forecast, interactive weather radar, and more in the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. You can also get notified when we publish new forecast updates. Free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Otherwise, hey, thanks for watching us here on the Texas Weather Center YouTube channel. We appreciate all of those who have been watching our videos the last few days. The analytics have been amazing. We appreciate all of you all who have joined the Texas Weather Center family by hitting that subscribe button. It's free. And we also appreciate all those who have taken the time to hit that thumbs up button. It helps us with the algorithm and it makes Baldy and Chief, me, myself, and I feel special. So with that being said, y'all have a great night. Don't stay up all night looking at model data. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You're staying up all night giggling over. It's not going to change anything. I, I can say that. I did that in my younger years. And maybe tonight we'll see. But that's it. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Y'all have a good night. God bless.